Hi and welcome to another episode of PeaceMeg TV. In today's tutorial for Lightroom, we're going to be taking a look at this image and how we can try to salvage it and see what can be done in Lightroom. Now, this is a photograph that I took recently on a DJI Phantom drone. Even though I was using a graduated filter on there, it still didn't expose exactly as I would have liked, as you can tell. But let's see how powerful Lightroom actually is and how we can start to process an image shot with a drone, which doesn't have the best camera in the world. So let's take a look at how we can do that now. So with a camera like the DJI Phantom 4, you can get into position to take photographs that you just couldn't possibly take by any other method. So with this, I've just taken in pretty extreme circumstances. We had a storm coming in from the left-hand side, so you can see the sort of darker clouds. The sky on the right-hand side is nice and blue and summery, and the, the, the sort of sun is kind of coming through the clouds and bringing in some light rays, and just really the exposure is mostly for the sky with the ground itself is pretty much underexposed. But we should be able to salvage something out of this. So let's go through the process of how we can take an image like this and how we can process it and really bring out something that's not too bad right at the end of it. So let's take a look at how we can do that. So I'm going to process this photograph in two parts. I'm going to process the sky and I'm going to process the ground. And then when I finished all that and got it to roughly where I want, then I'll look at editing the entire photograph uh, with all my edits in place. So to start off with, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come down to the Lens Correction section and I'm going to enable Remove Chromatic Aberration, Enable Profile Correction and I'm going to choose the Make to be DJI and as you can see it picks up the fact that it's a Phantom 4 camera and it will adjust for any distortion and things in the lens for me. So there's the first thing I want to do. Next thing I'm going to come in to do is start processing the sky before I worry about processing the actual ground itself. So to do that, I'm going to come up to the basic panel, but I'm going to put a graduated filter on there. So I'm going to control the sky separately. So let's put our graduated filter on, bring that down to just below the horizon. So now I can start processing this part of the image. So the first thing I want to do is make sure that I don't lose any of this these highlights from where the, the sun is poking through the clouds. So let's take the exposure just down ever so slightly and we'll make sure we'll deal with the highlights. We'll pull that back. We'll take the whites back as well so we can see what we've got to work with. And as you can see, we've got a pretty good range of dynamic information in there. We're not really losing anything. So I'm not getting any massively blown highlights. So I can control that quite nicely. So we'll, we'll make sure that we keep everything we can in there. while keeping some of the drama in the image itself. Okay, that's looking good to start off with. So the next thing I wanna do is just add some clarity to give it a sort of sense of, of depth to enhance the blacks. So let's give it a bit of clarity, really make that sky pop. I don't wanna go crazy with this, and as with everything like this, I can come back, it's totally non-destructive, so I can edit this and I can come back in and tweak it should I need to. And the dehaze is an, an, a fantastic new addition, but used sparingly, because you can go a bit crazy and get intense looking clouds and the blue of the sky goes a little bit mad. Probably a bit too much, but we can use a little bit of that, maybe around 15 to 20, just to give it some, some drama. And I just give it a little more saturation in there as well, which is only really gonna affect the blue of the sky. So there's a good starting point. So with the basic edit now of the sky in place, I need to now switch over and start working with the, the ground. So let's just say done to the first of our gradients. And we're gonna do the same again, but this time we're gonna bring this up from the bottom. I'm not gonna worry about this bottom sort of fifth of the image because I'm gonna crop that out later anyway. So I'm gonna start my graduated filter from around this position, overlap it to the, the sky a little bit so we'll see some, some changes in there, but we can compensate for that should we need to. Now, obviously, the first thing I want to do is just increase the exposure to start bringing some, some lightness back into that. I don't want to go crazy because we're starting to introduce too much noise. And we'll open up the blacks and the shadows just to see what we've got there we can work with. I might take this and move this up ever so slightly just to 
light these mountains. Again, I don't want to go crazy because if we look at the left hand side, we've got the sort of storm clouds coming in and the darker area. If we start to lighten that too much, it's going to start to look a little unnatural because they're going to throw that shadow and shade over that part of the image. So I won't go crazy on there. We might look at adjusting that using the adjustment brush a bit later on just to bring a little bit more lightness back into it. But for now, we'll concentrate on the overall tone of the image. And let's get some life and some color into this part of the image before we start cropping. So again, we're going to start to use some clarity. We'll bring a bit of dehaze in there to give it a bit of punch. We'll up the saturation ever so slightly. I won't go crazy with this because I'm going to come into the, the individual HSL sliders later and I can tweak the individual colors that I want to boost in the image. But let's take a look at what we're doing. Let's bring the blacks back down a bit, add a bit more contrast. Open those shadows up because we want to get some of the detail in these trees, even though you can see the light is kind of backlighting those trees. So let's just get contrast in there. We'll adjust the temperature ever so slightly. I'm going to take that over to the, the warmer tones just to make it look a little bit more dramatic. And we'll do the same with the tint. We'll just bring that ever so slightly, introduce a bit more green into that. Okay, so. There's the before, there's the after. So we're already starting to look a lot better. So we've kind of got roughly where I want it to be. So I'm gonna close this down, I'm gonna say done on that. So we've now got the two graduated filters. We've affected the sky and we've affected the main part of the ground. So let's go through, let's crop this image now to the part that I want. So I'm just gonna hit the crop and link this because I want to adjust it without keeping the aspect ratio of the original image. And I'm just gonna bring this up and crop off those trees at the bottom keeping the house and the buildings and things in place and retaining the sky. And we'll hit done on that. So we've already got a slightly more interesting composition. So like I said, I'm going to use the adjustment brush now and I'm going to paint a little bit of con ah, sorry, a little bit of exposure in here just to make it a little bit light. This so it doesn't look quite so dark, but I don't want to go crazy. So we'll just go up to the adjustment brush. We'll adjust the exposure. We'll give it a crazy value on there to start off with just so I can start working. And I'll disable the auto mask. I don't want that. And we'll use the brackets, the square brackets to increase the size of our brush. And we'll bring this in. And then we can pull that back. So before and after, a little bit too much. Let's bring that back again. So about a quarter of a stop difference now. So we just lightened it up ever so slightly to give it that little bit less of a dark feel in the corner. Hit done. And now we can process the overall image. So I want to get some more color into the, the grass and the trees. The sky doesn't look too bad, but we can tweak that if we want to. So I'm going to come down to the HSL slider. And now I can target the specific colors through the hue, the saturation, and the luminance. So the luminance is going to give it a real sort of powerful look. The saturation is going to increase the color, and the hue would change the color. So I don't want to do any color changes to this. I just want to enhance those colors that are already in the image. So with the grass, the yellow is going to have the biggest impact. Even though you think it would be the green, it's the yellow that kind of gives it the most impact. So if we adjust that, you can see we can make it more yellow. Or we can bring it over, reduce the amount of yellow in there and make it slightly more green. Use that in combination with the green itself. So we can darken things down or we can lighten things up. I'm going to go for just lightening it ever so slightly. Okay, let's take a look at the sky now. And we'll do the same up there. So we'll just give this a little bit more blue. So you can see if we take it down, reduce it, we start to get darker in the sky, which gives it a bit more impact. And yeah, that's looking pretty good if I'm honest. So now I'm just going to come to the saturation and we'll just give the green a little bit more, the green and the yellow, just a little bit more saturation. Not a lot, just enough to give it just a little bit more punch. There we go, that's looking good. Okay, so let's, let's just make a couple of final tweaks now and we're pretty much all done. So a couple of final tweaks. I still like this guy, but I want to give it a slightly warmer tone. I want to make it look a little bit more imposing. So let's go into the shadows. 
Right, all right, let's come to the highlights. Let's take that over. Let's reduce some of those, and you can see it slightly warms everything up. And we'll take the whites out of it so slightly to give it a bit more, a bit more punch. Again, nothing dramatic. And then we're going to bring in a little bit more clarity just to get a little bit more uh, contrast in the actual ground itself. So we'll bump that up slightly. And you see we start to get a sort of slight pseudo HDR kind of effect to it, but it brings out the detail in the mid-ground and into the distance. So it makes that pop a little bit where you're starting to get a little bit wishy-washy. And finally, we'll just touch a little bit of vibrance on there. So there we go. That's a pretty rough and ready edit. But let's take a look at what we started off with and what we've ended up with. So this is the end result. And prior to that, if we just switch over, we can see there's our starting image, which was pretty much non-existent, a bit of sky, and the rest of it's almost shadow. And this is what we've ended up with, something far more dramatic. The light's far more interesting. We've got a lot of detail in there. The sky looks pretty imposing. And I think, in all honesty, it's not a bad end result from a photograph that started off looking pretty, pretty much like it was going to be thrown in the bin. Well, I hope you found this video useful. I hope it's given you an insight into the kind of things that you can do with images that you may consider just throwing away. DJI Phantom is a great aerial camera, and with a little bit of practice and a little bit of patience, you can get some amazing results. This wasn't necessarily one of them, but we've got an image at the end of it that, in all honesty, doesn't look too bad. Well, I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please hit that subscribe button below to be kept up to date with all of the content we add every single week. If you've got any comments, questions, or feedback on this video, or anything else covered on the channel, please pop those in the comment section below. If you do enjoy the tutorials we put out on this channel, please consider popping over to Amazon where you can purchase the new ebook we released on the Kindle store, Eight Essential Adobe Lightroom Techniques, where we go into detail about different techniques that every Adobe Lightroom user should really have in their arsenal. Link is in the description below and your support is much appreciated. Well, until next time, take care.